Hi everyone. Um, I also proclaim uh, the blood of Jesus over the electronics of this video in Jesus' name. Um, I pray the audio comes out correctly and um, this video is a coherent testimony for the body of Christ. Um, I want to be really transparent, guys. <sighs> Lately, I've kind of gotten some revelations as to um, the truth of my testimony and my, st and my story, the tactics of the enemy, of how they, um, how things worked out, and how they seem to come in fruition. Um, I want to share this, guys. I want to share this stuff to the body of Christ because I just—it's not about me. I hope it's not about me. I, I don't know. I, I think it's robbery to know some things that I'm, I know and not share it because because through this not only do we defeat the enemy through our testimony but we get to know how God works and how God moves and we get to know his heart to the way he moves and I'm telling you his word is so true everything I mean I'm just looking back now and everything works out for the good of those who are called according to his purpose, you know? Just as his word says. And I'm looking back and all all the years of rough seasons and injustices and stuff, looking back and finally seeing why God allows these things and his ways are not our ways. And his way and his thoughts are above our thoughts. And I just want to share um I hope I could get this out. Um, I just want to share what I know the best I can because I do think it's robbery for our brothers and sisters out there to not to not get the wisdom and not get the understanding that uh, things are you know that I'm beginning to understand it, it should be shared so what has been revealed to me was the original tactics of the enemy and how they plan to disqualify me or whatever why things are so bad and I understand most of our brothers and sisters don't know or can't conceive of or don't want to conceive of how bad things are because um, that is a cloak that the enemy hides behind is that it is too unbearable even for anyone to listen to without becoming absolutely enraged. And if you become enraged, you lose. So, now of course when, you know, we know from the book of Job, the enemy comes to try us, right? So, let's just stay on that foundation, okay? Now whenever the enemy came in here into Long Island, you know, they, they, they know everything about you. They knew things about me that I didn't know. Um, I know most of you know that I was molested as an infant, okay? When I was in the hospital after I was born. Um, the hospital at Union Square in New York City. I was there for six months before I was adopted into my family. And... Um, through the, the bad things that happened to me there. Um, sexual abuse causes a hardness in your heart. And um, I didn't know this. I didn't know this till recently because the Lord finally started to work these things in my life over this past year while I was in New York City out of Long Island. But the enemy already knew this about me. I didn't know the enemy knew this. I didn't know, I didn't know this about myself. So, what does the Bible say about the enemy? He comes to kill, kill, steal, and destroy. There's no mercy or compassion or fairness with the devil. The devil always overplays their hand. And um, so this is kind of the balance of good and evil that God uses. So it's my understanding that 
Eventually, the, the enemy concocted the idea, when I was stuck here in Long Island, and just to hit me as hard as they possibly could, mercy, mercilessly, anything they could get away with, the, and I was stuck here. You know, the break-ins, every time I would turn my head, someone would come into the home and steal, kill, or destroy something. And, and the Lord allowed these things for years. And what does the Bible say about the enemy? He leads them into their own sin. They become a reprobate mind, like in the book of Romans 1. So he, he lets this stuff happen, and they just become so arrogant, they just forget about fairness. They, didn't, they don't even consider that God is good or fair. But they knew that I had this condition that I was molested as an infant. And if you're molested as an infant, you have a condition in your heart that fights back, or that is hardened, you know? I had no idea about this. And that was the enemy's plan. So, what the enemy had for me here in Long Island is either I die, I had two options, either die, or fight and get disqualified by God. That was their, that was their theory. There is no, there is no other way to, Every, anything else would not be an option, so it's a win-win situation for the enemy. To the people of God, that is ignorant, because we know God is good, graceful, and merciful. But at the time that my story started, I didn't know the Lord. I didn't know the Bible. Um, you know, the Lord brought Nainania into, um, into my walk, and when I first found her on YouTube... That was my first exposure to Bible prophecy, and we know, and, you know, I'm not condemning her, it's not like that, but, but there, there was error in her lens of the Bible, that not all the Bible is true, and this and that, not to her fault, not, you know, um, so that was my exposure, so I didn't know the Bible, I didn't know, I didn't know the Word, I didn't know what it was like to be saved, or called to walk with Christ, I didn't know the power and authority that we have, I didn't know these things, so for years, while I was here in Long Island, um, I was stripped of all my integrity, stripped of all um, pride. Or, and you know, God does these things to to break us down so He can use us. You know, even though it's unfair and unjust. Let me explain how it's how it's been for years. Okay, the way the enemy is here is they are so you know. They go for that hardness that's in your heart because of the molestation, which is not my fault. So they thrive on that. So an example of some of the injustices that we have to accept as life here is, um, you know, we're going to kick you in the face every day nonstop. And if you say something and fight back, then we're going to stab your pregnant girlfriend in the stomach and rape her in public. And it's going to be your fault. And, um, and that's life. Accept it. So, if, so while they take every single inch of you, um, you have to take it. Now those who are in Christ know the serpent and the adder is under our feet. We have the power and authority um, to trample over snakes and scorpions and we take that snake by the tail and raise up our staff. I didn't know that then though. But it was God's will. You see... Let me explain what it's like here, how bad the enemy is here. Imagine getting, okay, they don't just take you out. They make you suffer to, it's death by discomfort. So you have to kill yourself or it's the most painful thing you can imagine. So imagine getting pinched to death. Imagine somebody just pinching you and pinching you and pinching you and pinching you and pinching you over and over and over and over and over and over and over again for years and years and years and years. And... The only way for it to stop is their death. So you don't have an option except to fight back. So really guys, I mean, it's realistically it's just overwhelming to be able to talk about this stuff. You can't put it in words. And that's kind of the idea behind the campaign of this persecution. Um, the only way to come out of this is to be a perfect person. 
So those who know the Lord, those who know God's word, this is absolute foolishness. So looking back, it's pretty amazing. You could see how he allowed this stuff, how all these things came to fruition over the course of the years. That just seems injustice, imperfect. Okay, he doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called, you know? And, um, and through their own wickedness, they, they deceived themselves. Um, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools because they know all this stuff about you and they just make these assumptions, say, we got them, you know. But um, only the Lord knows our hearts. And um, the idea of the devil's refinement is to really try you to see under your worst circumstance, are you going to stick with God or are you just going to give in to hatred and go with the devil? And um, in this overwhelmingly overwhelming situation, it seems impossible. Um, but uh, we still stand in love. And uh, the love of God in our hearts is greater than the sin nature we inherited from the sin of Adam and Eve. Praise God. So they were wrong. The problem is, is that the situation of Long Island, you're stuck in a situation where either you die or fight. There's no other way out. That's it. And now that I know who I am in Christ, I know the power and authority given to us by the sacrifice Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago. They're already defeated. And we stand on that in truth because our God is faithful and true. And nobody is disappointed who cries out and relies on Him. For the enemy did not consider the goodness of the Lord. They did not consider that He has grace and mercy on His elect. And, and I... I you know, for those who abide by His commandments, it's not, a, it's not a religious, it's not a lawful thing. It's the written Word of God. When you live by what the Bible says, um, He has His hand on you. He protects you. Um, he, you have His favor that way. And, and the Bible is the most precious gift uh, in the world because staying in the Bible, staying in God's Word is the only thing in this world that will bring you perfect peace. And I feel like, I'm not, I mean, I'm not perfect, but... You know, I could be a testimony to that. Anybody could be a testimony to that. The love we have for God's Word overrides anything. Because it's more love than, than the world could ever possibly give us, you know? So, you know, the scriptures and the sacred text in the Bible, I don't know what text, but the Word of God is a reproach to the devil. They reject wisdom. You know, you read this in Proverbs 1... And so here we are in this situation where it's either you die the most painful death possible or you fight and get this quote like it's a win-win situation for the devil <laughs> and they don't consider that God is good and graceful and merciful you don't just you don't get disqualified for something that's not even your fault they're fools so what they also don't realize is that God gives us by the fruit of our own ways you know Psalm 18 to the forward, he is forward. To the merciful, he is merciful. To the upright, he is upright. So he gives them by the fruit of their own ways. So this hardened heart, this fighting spirit that I've involuntarily um, have grown into from living in this situation um, will be used against them. And they can't tolerate that. And it's actually kind of funny. So, in my testimony, this situation here, the only option for me to do is die a very painful death, um, you know, by getting pinched to death, so to speak, metaphorically, just being uncomfortable until you die, um, or fight. And, um, I mean, guys, there are words, you know, the witchcraft and everything is just so strong. Everything is just... Bam, 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 bam. Anything they can possibly hit at you. Uh, relentlessly. After your family is murdered, there is no mourning. They set you up for the murder. There is nothing, nothing. And if you step up to us, then um, someone will get raped and killed and it will be your fault. And, um, but now, 
and God allowed this stuff and and it's kind of funny because now it's just they have to eat the fruit of their own ways however that's going to take play I don't know but all those prayers crying out to God for injustice and stuff like that and so I'm in a situ so you're in this situation whether you die a painful death or fight and get yourself disqualified you know by fighting oh you're not allowed to fight that's not the heart of the Lord <laughs> and um I forgot the point I was going to say, hence the witchcraft date. Um, I'll get back to you. So the point I'm tr I was trying to say, excuse me, um, I pray this is comprehensible to anyone watching this in Jesus' name. Um, so if you could only imagine, either you die a very painful death or, dis or get disqualified um, by God, by something that you don't even know, it's not your fault. And if you ever found that out, that's just a shock on the nervous system. Oh my God, you'll just freak out. I was molested as an infant. I didn't know this is all my, everything sucks. Oh God, it's just, that's just the devil. It's all about the devil, me, me, me. And there's no goodness, there's no mercy. God's goodness and grace is not even considered. It's a joke. Oh, it's not a joke, but he allows these things to happen. All for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. And I just see that now, looking in hindsight. You know, all the errors and mistakes and the ignorance from the past is being used for good. Because our ignorance and all that stuff allowed the devil, allowed the devil to be so arrogant um, to treat us this way. And now, when it's payback time, he, God could just bless us even more. And that's how good God is. So, like, what I'm learning is to just... To lean not on our own understanding and just know that every God makes a way where there is no way and just and just know that everything he does everything that happens uh, works uh, for our good and I'm really looking at learning that um, looking in hindsight so it's really amazing I, I just want to say shout for joy if you could, if you're comprehending this if you're imagine just shout for joy how good God is how good he how good is he how good is the Lord? How good is the Lord? We endure this suffering. Our suffering is not in vain. Our suffering is not in vain. Even if we don't understand it. He does repay. Even if it takes years and years. He does repay. He does repay. He is good. He is good. And even those who seem to have died unjustly. He repays because there's a resurrection. There's a judgment. Um, his ways are above our ways. There's more to life than just this in just this plane of existence which is but a vapor and I, I just hope people could see that and I hope people can understand the intensity and the severity of this situation so they can understand our scriptures and know the heart of the Lord and 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 really understand the stuff um, some people have gone through and that that our imperfections are not our fault you know I mean we're all we're all imperfect you know not of course all of our works are filthy rags but we're all traumatized and insecure and all this kind of stuff because that was the way we were molded into but God allowed that and uh, I don't know but the beauty of God's work is I'm just looking in hindsight I'm beginning to realize and um, and I've been I've been reading, I've been really, I've been listening to the Wisdom of Solomon a lot, guys. And I know that the Wisdom of Solomon, that book, in the Apocrypha, is the inspired word of God. And there's a lot of stuff to talk about, but... Because there, there are revelations in there that are key, that the body of Christ should know. For those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, and, and that could just take the time and study and... And absorb and understand and lean on our, on our own understanding, you know, and um, and at least read through chapters one through eight or so, one through seven. And um, I, I suggest the R. H. Charles version. Um, that's the audio book I've been listening to. But you know, because sometimes the words seem to just hit the nail on the head. And, and I'm telling you, things the Lord has shown me years ago, I see in that text word for word. 
And it's amazing. It's just it's just amazing how good God is. It's just amazing. The Lord is just amazing. His word is amazing that lasts forever. Heaven and earth pass away, but his his word does not pass away and it does not turn void. And, and it's funny seeing the heathen reject they reject the word, but then when the truth comes out and they hear it, all they could do is hang their heads and regret. And yes, they will retaliate or they will plan to retaliate, but I just ask a call to prayer that we pray against all retaliation and that the Lord has mercy and grace upon his people. For the scales are wanting in Jesus' name. The scales are wanting. And those who know the situation that we've been through for, through years that before we went out on YouTube and all this kind of stuff and they know the scales are wanting the scales are wanting okay you know stepping up to somebody after they continually kick in your face and you step up to this or we'll, we'll stab your pregnant go girlfriend in the stomach and rape her in public and have it be your fault and that's just life that's how we live for years and yes God, God has something to say about that God gives them by the fruit of their own ways. And he leads them into their own sin, so their own arrogance is they can't take any reproof. But then when it's time to pay up, um, you know, as, as the scripture says, why do the heathen rage? Why do the heathen rage? Why, why, why is the key word. Why do the heathen rage? Ponder, wonder about that. So I just wanted to share this testimony and, and I just feel the might and the wanting of the scales of my I could just go off and off and off and it's righteous and it's righteous guys it's righteous yes we bless those who curse us we pray for those who spitefully use us but we have to put that in, in context because the scriptures also uh, talk about recompense and um, an unrelenting merciless enemy in the books of the prophets So I don't know. I've been wrestling with this with the Lord. I, it's like, Lord, I don't know what to pray. If, if I do that, it turns your word void. I, I don't know. I just pray, if I could make any prayer, I just pray that the Lord has mercy so he alone is glorified. And he will be glorified. He alone will be glorified. God is not mocked. And if you could think of this, the arrogance and the, pr and the prideness, the, the merciless arrogance and the merciless totalitarian state and them hiding behind this cookie cutter mentality here in the suburbs hiding behind every you know if you step out of the box you're a little you're a weirdo and and that's going to be used against you and god has something to say about all this stuff and i and i think in the kingdom all that stuff's gonna be broken down you know praise god because he loves diversity he loves individuality and and we will inherit the land one day I just pray, please guys, try to focus on what I'm saying. I just want to share, because there is so much revelation in these texts. And and if those who have the ears to hear it and, and can absorb it and have that gain that wisdom, it would be robbery to uh, deprive the body of Christ of these re revelations. So I just want to try to share. I just want to try to share. God bless you to understand the times that we're in to understand the way the Lord moves in Jesus name and how good he is and to stay faithful and true and have faith in him when he comes will he find faith in the land have faith in him because we will have a day of calamity as the scriptures say we will have a day of calamity but he will save us he will save us he will save us read Obadiah he will save us And I don't exactly know what's going to happen, but the scales are wanting. The scales are wanting. The angels want to execute God's judgment. There are, the courts are crying out in heaven here. And if only people knew how bad it is, it's rightfully so. There needs to be a judgment. There needs to be a judgment. God bless you guys.